hundred yard games in, in general is that is that a, that a good thing for a run? I mean, do you look back a hundred yard game and say that, that that's clearly a pretty good game if I hit if I hit a hundred? If you run for hundred yards in an NFL game, yes, I think that's good. Yeah. What what uh, what makes hundred like everyone talks about hundred? What makes that you know special mark? You think? Um, I think just you know have success in the run game. I'm um, dominating line of scrimmage, um, running back finishing runs and getting everything he can out of a run. Um, and just, just being efficient and you know playing at a high level all game. I mean that takes you know a lot of you know detail and uh, fundamentals in each and every play for you to have success. You in the offensive line, you sit on top of the NFL in rushing yards. Is that something you kind of envisioned during this off season when you were you know putting in the work? Um, no, I mean I don't really try to you know put that as a, a stamp as a, we got to be number one. But I think just me playing at a high level or have a uh, uh, efficiency affecting the game by the way I play, whether I have the ball or if I, if I don't have the ball, being the best teammate I can be, and us just being tied together and um, you know um, having the will and wanting to dominate each game in line of scrimmage and doing the job the best we can. You told us. Home runs would come. You had 54 yarder there, which certainly qualifies. You've, you've run great, but you've gotten caught a couple times, which didn't ever used to happen. When you watch that, does it make you angry? Are you funny? Does it uh, Houston, I got caught. He tapped my foot, so that brought me out of stride. And then in Kansas City, I had to recatch my balance. So I mean, I don't know. I mean, when do you start asking me questions about me getting caught, or oh, 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 worry about that? I'm I'm fine. When it, when it comes, I'll, I'll break one and everybody will be asking questions about something else. How much in detail do you guys go over just the red zone offense and it continues to be successful and consistent down there, but how much actual attention do you focus on that in practices? Um, there's always a, a, a focus on every uh, aspect of the game. And, you know, we want to be detailed in, in everything that we do. And um, when we get down there, we want to want to score, uh, put plays together. And we go out here and execute, so why not go out there and execute in the game? So, what's your reco recovery look like for you? I guess after games, and just how big of a challenge is it when you got a game Sunday and then you could be turning around playing, you know, on this day next week? My recovery is, is always the same. I do my preparation um, throughout the week, as I always do. But it's going to be challenging. Uh, you got to change up a couple of things because the schedule change and a quick turnaround. But yeah, just try to do as much as I can um, as possible, so I'll be ready for Thursday. Mike talked about the. Uh, the, the, for trailing with the with the foot that he's been in the pool and the the lighter gravity things, trying to stay fit while dealing with the foot injury. How helpful was it to you to have those resources when you were were trying to stay fit with a foot injury? And how how cool is it to be able to have those resources? Um, yeah, I mean, just taking care of yourself, um, um keep your body in shape, and doing everything that's required. You know, as far as the plan they have for us, just when we're ready to come back, um, we get back in the swing of things. And, you know, as, as far as you, you just prepare to go out there and play in the game. Were you able to do maybe more than you expected in that department? Uh, that was a whole year ago. I mean, I try to do anything I can possible to get back. I'm just writing about Traylon as well. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sure Traylon has worked hard and did everything he needs to do to get himself back and uh, and come in and help us, and you know I'm just happy to have him back and happy to have him come out there and, and Sunday and contribute. But you know you got to come out here and, and get better throughout the week to, you know, have a great game on Sunday. Back in training camp, it seemed like for the first time you actually like admitted that that you were looking at some of the things that outside people were saying, and you said they're going to see. Is mm -hmm. that something that still drives you to this point? And, and do you feel like they have seen from what you've done now? Um, I mean, like like I told you, um, I get motivated from from anything, and um, you know, um, I get motivated from stuff from back in high school when I said when they said I wouldn't make it this far at at, at this position. So, um, you know, I can't really try try to focus too much on them because I have a job to do. But um, you know, I, all I can, can can worry about is continue getting better week after week, and you know, just just push myself to be to be the best player I can be. And when again, you were in high school, what, where did people, you think, project you to be in college? And maybe if, if you were to have a career, what would it have been at? Say it again? When you were in high school, you were talking about people questioning whether you could be successful at running back. What do you think they thought you would be uh, as a football player? Well, I don't think they thought I'd be here. But um, you know, I'm just happy and blessed that God has, you know, blessed me tremendously to make it this far. Well, you got three new starters on the line from last year. With, Dennis filling in for Taylor. 
does it did it take a little time for you to get used to their them and them to get used to you and now things are kind of peaking um no not at all um i think we have an identity and how we want to play and i think ben and nate you know they're guys who've been in the system for a long time that can help those guys get prepared and you know taylor's been around so not at all. I mean, it's got a block, and I got to run and try to get a job done. We've all seen tape of what you did at U of Lee. What was the basis of people's doubts about your future when you were a kid? I guess because, you know, usually guys who are big and play running back in high school usually turn into edge rushers or or, uh, or put on defense. Um, I guess I was just not the normal running back that came, you know, throughout you know high school in the recent years. And, I mean, people just had doubts about it. But... Like I said, God has blessed me tremendously, and you know, throughout my years of going to Alabama and coming here, and you know, I'm just just, just thankful and what what have I been able to do so? You played at a smaller high school. Did you did you play anywhere on defense as well? A lot of guys I played play defense. Yeah, I played defense. Played play? in defense and played safety, and um, you know, did all those type of things. But what what do I need to do to help us win? No, when you watch Denver, what is, what is Denver, uh, when you watch them on defense, what do they do that makes them successful? The other thing, they're stout um, on their D-line, a that guy that's, that's playing well. Um, you know, it's, they're, they're penetrating their readers. And then their uh, linebackers are smart, and we know the, the experience they have in the, in the back end with Simmons and um, Kareem Jackson. So I think they play well together, and uh, it'll be another big task for us uh, coming in on Sunday. Knowing the way you, you have been blessed, like the ability you've been blessed with, why is it? so important for you to deflect when you have success to the offensive line and, and to your teammates? I mean, because they're the reason why I, I have success. Um, without them, it doesn't, I mean, we, we don't get started. They get the play started and I got to make my reads and, you know, get north and south and, you know, and do what I do. But without, you know, those guys up front and tight ends, full backs, receivers blocking, I have no success. So I'm always going to give credit to them whenever I do have success. Different shirt, never seen that. Christian Fulton's brand. Okay. Yeah. Suck up. Come on, man. You a hate. Stop hating, man. Don't hate. Congratulations. Which player you guys may think has made uh, Hassan uh, kind of be successful as a, a returner, but and also maybe in, on kick coverage. Yeah, I think it's the time that he puts in, uh, just coming in and meeting with us a bunch, um, whether it was during the off-season training camp, uh, and even now he's coming in and during his off days and wanting to talk to us about being a returner. Um, how to tackle correctly and all that stuff. So he's putting in the, the time, whether it's on the practice field or during his time off, he's just continuing to learn and get better. But covering kicks is not just, hey, go get the ball. I mean, yeah. you've, got, you've got rules and responsibilities. How, how is he still getting there so often? Yeah, you know, one, it's his desire. Uh, this guy just goes down there and... I wouldn't say that he's just putting his body in a bad spot or just being uh, reckless, but he's just going down there and being a physical presence on a lot of things that he does. I feel like his last two tackles on kickoff, he's running over someone and also making the tackle. Um, but we kind of well continue to teach him different techniques that he's trying to use, especially on our punt team. Um, you know, whether to get off a block, a single block, or whether he's running down there and someone's trying to pin him in. Uh, we got to continue to teach him to stack defenders and then when he gets in a position to make a tackle he's doing it correctly and having a good base to him not crossing over not hopping uh, and keeping his eyes up when he makes tackles were there some instances Craig and in, in punt return against KC that that you might have been looking for better coverage on oh, some of those? Sure. I mean, we, we gave up too many yards um, on on their punt return. Uh, we, we've got to do a much better job on our net. Uh, we had too many guys following the same color jersey, which allowed them to get to the outside um, where our guys got pinned. And we got to continue to harp with those guys because they're running down there. They just got to understand what the other team is trying to do. And we got to coach that better. And uh, But that was way too many yards for us. And um, we expect a lot better. Um, just because of how we've been playing in the past couple weeks. Uh, so we'll work on that again today and, and try to help these guys understand that we got to keep contained because we lost contained twice versus them. Has Stonehouse improved his hang time and his directional punting over the course of the year? Yeah, I, I would say maybe um, it's not where it's been early in the season, even the hang time and direction. Uh, the direction is a little bit more on us as coaches because we are not giving him sometimes the direction and we're just having him go and hit the ball as far as he can. Uh, so that's not 
totally what we're looking for all the time. But, uh, you know, we'll continue to work with him as far as some direction that we want to get to. Uh, and we got to continue to work on his hang time because it is a little bit lower than what it was at the beginning of the year. We saw last year with Monty Rice how the special teams transferred to linebacker play. Are you seeing that with Dylan Cole? And if so, how? Yeah, um, you know, I think the greatest thing about Dylan is whether he plays on defense or on special teams, uh, he's always going to be all in on everything. And he's transitioning more to defense, um, but his play hasn't went off. Now, it might not be in production-wise, but we still feel like he's being a productive football player for us, whether it's blocking, whether it's going down there on kickoff return and doing a great job on single blocks or on double teams. Uh, he knows how he made a living in the NFL, and that's with special teams. So whether he transitions to defense even more, he knows his bread and butter is with special teams. Is a touchback always a good outcome when you kick off, and, and how much more difficult is that going to be here as the air gets colder and the wind starts whipping a little more these last couple of months? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously going to be different because of the weather. Um, but there's still games where we're going to ask Randy to go and try to kick touchbacks or we're going to play uh, to our advantage where we feel like we need to kick the ball up and get some more hang time where we feel like we can go and make some more tackles inside the 20-yard line. But, um, you know, we might tell Randy that, hey, instead of hanging this thing up to the five-yard line, we still want you to kick it deep as hard as you can, but knowing that that ball might go to the goal line or minus two or minus three, and then we're going to try to make them make the decision to bring it out or not. Just for the wide receiver certainly stands out. What were some of the factors that, that go into that for you? Is it simply on the wide receivers or more to it? No, no, it's not. I don't think at any time that there's a, a lack of success or productivity, it's on one group. I'll always say it starts with me. I got to find ways to get those guys involved and, uh, you know, and find better ways to, you know, free them up and, and get some stuff going. I think we had a couple of opportunities, uh, you know, that we weren't able to take advantage of. And then, you know, by and large, the second half, we put ourselves in some pretty bad spots, you know, where we penalties or lost yardage plays that kind of took us out of uh, third manageables and, and, you know, kind of put us behind the sticks a little bit. So culmination of everything, but uh, certainly starts with me. You picked up the two best chances that you have to get in field position for a two-score lead. That's on them, yes? Uh, you know, obviously, they want to have those, you know, opportunities uh, back, I'm sure, if, they, if you were to talk to them, you know. But I'm always going to, you know, err on the side of knowing how hard those guys work and know how much they care, uh, you know, and not place blame just on one single person. So. What have you seen from Malik from, from start one to start two as far as where he improved and in, in areas he could still get better? Yeah, I think things slowed down for him, you know, uh, from the Houston game in, into Kansas City. I think he processed a little bit cleaner. Uh, you know, certainly I think some of the butterflies or nerves kind of uh, had dissipated a little bit, uh, you know, and, and I think that he's obviously still got a lot of areas for improvement, which we all do. And, uh, you know, he's working hard to try to fix those areas. In a situation where you've got a limitation, let's say you're not throwing in the field much because that's maybe something that's not tailored to Malik. Is there obligation to try to do it some anyway to keep the defense honest? How do you kind of navigate a line like that? I think you have to look for ways to keep them honest. You know, maybe it's cer uh, certain play passes. Doesn't always have to be a traditional uh, drop back game or, th or things of that nature. Our screen game, uh, you know, have been a strength of ours uh, going into that you know, that game we obviously didn't execute very well uh, on Sunday. But, you know, the, uh, we're always looking for ways to make sure that we're not getting predictable. Um, a little bit different than the Houston game where predictable was okay when we were cranking at, you know, 8, 10 yards a pop. Uh, you know, we, we need to make sure that we're keeping them honest and, and keeping them balanced. And that's constantly something the, the staff and I are discussing on the headsets and trying to, uh, you know, keep them off balance. How many does you have to uh, adapt, so to speak, the game plan? In other words, this was – there's a play call I would run with Ryan and but would not run with Malik, or I would run with Malik but not Ryan. We have plenty of opportunities to work through that stuff throughout the the course of the week, you know, and, and give Malik opportunities to uh, see some of those things. And uh, I, I think anytime you're dealing with a, a different player in there, whether it be quarterback, you know, receiver, tight end, offensive line, you have to you have to adjust to whatever your ingredients are, right? And and so certainly we're looking for things that, you know, maybe in Malik's wheelhouse, um, you know, but 
we, we have to find ways to execute regardless of what the call is, you know, and, and I think that that's something that the consistency certainly needs to improve from first half to second half and, and regardless of who's in there. With the separation issues that, you know, the receivers are having, obviously that is part on the player, but as an OC, like, are there things that you could do to scheme up to create separation for the wideouts? Yeah, there's certainly things that uh, you know, certainly things that we try to do to to help out uh, in those regards. Obviously, some very talented corners in this league. Uh, we're going to play some this Sunday, uh, and so we're always trying to do that. And I think that we've built quite a catalog of of trying to get some of those rub releases and and things of that nature. You know, um, and there's always a balance in that too. You know, holding the ball too long or letting something long developing uh, unfold can put a lot of pressure on the protection. Excuse me. And, uh, you know, and so we're always looking for ways to try to scheme those guys up for sure. What do you need to see from Traylon to know he's a go on Sunday? And how much would his return help? I'll get that from uh, from the boss man. He gives me the thumbs up, and I'll be good to go. How, how have you liked what you've seen him just in a short snippet so far? I have been really impressed, number one, with how he kept himself in shape. Uh, and number two, just mentally how engaged he's been, you know. Picked up right where he left off from a formation, from a schematic standpoint. You can tell that he didn't just step away from football while rehabbing, and uh, that's really impressive for a young player, particularly one that you know had some bumps in the road, uh, you know, early in training camp. Has really figured out how to be a pro. I give a lot of credit to Rob Moore for working with him and setting up that schedule. How do you think Malik has done in terms of just kind of the intangibles? You know, leading the ones out here in practice, just commanded up on the on, on game day. Those, those kinds of things. Yeah, I think he's done a nice job of, of playing that balance between understanding that, you know who Ryan is and what Ryan is to this team, uh, but still putting his leadership style and, and his personality into it when given the opportunity. So impressive. Uh, obviously, we know he has an, an infectious personality. And uh, you know that's something that is going to serve him well going forward. But uh, I think it's been really impressive how he's, he's found ways to interject his personality, his leadership style, what's important to him, and yet not, uh, you know, not try to be too overly abrasive or, or intrusive. The defense has tried to clog the, the box, I guess, even more so with a rookie quarterback the last two weeks, you know, expecting even more Derrick Henry. Yeah, we've been dealing with clogged boxes here since I've been a tight end coach here. Yeah, they, they know who Derrick is, and, you know, we're seeing the same defenses. It may be that they – you know, show it a little bit earlier. Or there's a little bit more pressure, but it's the same defense as we've been dealing with for four years. Pro, do you guys have to change anything when you got a quarterback like Malik who's looking to extend plays behind the line of scrimmage? Does the strategy, philosophy kind of change it all there? I don't think necessarily from a schematic standpoint, but maybe from a technique standpoint. And those guys realizing that the you know the journey's never over up front until the whistle blows. You know, um, and so that that's more of a you know technique and fundamental thing than it is necessarily schematics. How effective was he with the zone read stuff and how, how much stress did you see that putting on a defense? Yeah, I thought it was good. We you know we ran a couple of those in Houston as well with without as much uh, return on the investment. You know, but I thought he did a nice job uh, with his reads, making the proper reads in uh, in Kansas City. And you know we had the one that was called back due to the penalty on on Cody. Um, but you know a couple of opportunities explosive plays there. So it's always nice to be able to put extra pressure on the edge of the defense. When it comes to the red zone consistency, Todd, uh, how much added work goes into that, detail work goes into that, and how much is Ryan kind of the, the leader in the success that you have down there? Yeah, you know, it's been something that we've been committed to since I've been here. I remember way back my tight end uh, coach interview with Coach Vrabel, we discussed the red zone, and it's something that you know makes a big difference in, in points scored and, and obviously, uh, you know, creating separation if you do have a lead. And, uh, you know, that that's something that we've committed to holistically around here. And I, I would say that Ryan's done a great job down there for us, but we also went two for two in the red zone, you know, with Malik. So we expect whoever's in there to understand the schemes that we carry each week, the bread and butter uh, type, you know, concepts and, and be able to execute them. How much do you think, um, How much you think it is? Father Ryan not to be able to play and just knowing his personality, how much do you think he's itching to get back out there? Yeah, you guys have been around him long enough to know it's it's killing him. You know, he uh, he's a fierce competitor. We all know how tough he is. Uh, you know, he is doing everything possible uh, to get back out there. And, you know, we're really appreciative to have a guy like that that it's putting so much into it and it means so much to him. We've, we've talked some about 
numbers where you consider things predictable or, or not. Mm -hmm. You guys have run over 70% of the time on second and 10 after, after an incompletion on first down. Mm -hmm. Is that a predictable level to you? And is that you guys saying, hey, we know we can get into third and manageable with Derek? Or kind of what's what's the thinking there? Yeah, I would say 70% is, is predictable. I would agree with you on that. I would tell you that um, – there's also tendencies on the other side of the football uh, where we're getting some split safety looks, and that's maybe some of the places we actually do see an advantageous box and feel like we can get ourselves into some of those third and shorter uh, windows. And where we didn't do a good job of that the other night is where we had some either lost yardage or, or incompletions and zero-yard gains. Now we wound up in third and 10, third and 12, and, and that's just not what we're built uh, to, to live in. You know, there aren't a lot of offenses that are. So uh, there's a balance there, and certainly I try to keep track of that stuff and, and make sure that I'm not getting too far out of whack. Um, and usually you can tell if the defense has changed their call off of something that they're well known for, then it's something I got to be aware of and, uh, and try to react accordingly. Defense, does it kind of up the ante in your room, thinking that uh, we've got to make sure that we're on our, our uh, keys and points, especially coming off a road game and some guys playing almost 100 snaps the other night? Yeah, I think our guys are uh, they're aware of what they are on defense, the success they've had this year, where they kind of stand as you look at it. Um, but we're focused on controlling what we can control. we got to go out there and play the offense. you know. So we got to make sure we're locked in on doing our job understanding what they do offensively, um, our game plan, how to execute it, and take it play by play. I know, I know Mike talked on Monday just about Russell and his ability to kind of extend plays with his legs, kind of like Mahomes did. How much, uh, how much is he doing that this year? How much of a concern is that for your group? Have yeah, you, you see it. I mean, it shows up on film. and scrambling for first downs um, and getting them. So it's, it's still part of what he does, probably not to the extent that was earlier in his career, but um, still got the ability to do it. We got to make sure we're coordinated, understand our rush lanes, and everybody on the same page with whatever we got going on um, to make sure there's no easy, easy escapes where he can pick up yards or get some of those first downs on, on longer yardage. How unique is it though? Because you, because you see him able to scramble backwards as well, and then push the ball down the field. How unique is that? With with Russ, R right? Yeah, I mean it is like it's it's not a whole lot different than last week with Mahomes. You know, these guys able to throw the ball and and. Russ has played a lot of football, you know, so he, he sees the game, he keeps his eyes downfield, and he's going to take advantage of it. If you're coming out of coverage to take care of him, he's going to find it, you know, and that's what the good ones do. They they put stress on you. They break down the defense. And whenever these guys get out of pocket, it puts a lot of pressure on those DBs because they're in decision mode at some point. Is it plaster my guy, or at what point am I going to get the quarterback? And they don't, don't always know where the line of scrimmage is that he's crossed. So we got to do a good job trying to keep him bottled up. How much did? Losing Bud the other night kind of allow Mahomes to make it easier for him to break contain. And if you don't have Bud this week, you know, how do you try and remedy that? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, anytime we lose anybody on game day, it's it's tough. Um, I mean, you're you're working through personnel changes as the game goes, and it happens, I mean, it happens every game, you know. Um, so, I mean, we always have a plan for it, prepared for it. And, again, just I think everybody understanding whoever's in there what their role is and however we're going to rush them to try to keep them contained. What's Cole's growth curve look like in his time here and what's behind it? Yeah, I think he's improved uh, throughout the season. I, I do. I think uh, early on it was more spot spot work and you don't really get in the flow of the game and you're asked to go in there and execute in some different personnel packages we have and it, that might only be your four or five plays and don't get me wrong, he's expected to go in there and execute, you know, but now it's as you play more, you get a little more comfortable. You see a lot more as you're out there um, and what we're asking him to do. And he's done a good job when he's been in there filling in for us. Did you watch much of Danico when he first came into the league? And and what's allowed him to continue to have so much success this late in his career? Yeah, I mean, just uh, Terrell Williams was with him in Oakland um, and just talking to him and I think his mindset, right? Like an undrafted guy who's came to work, he's tough. He's physical, and I think his skill set skill set has has developed to the point where he he understands who he is, and he's able to capitalize on on the quickness. And we've been able to find some favorable matchups that he's been able to take care of. Uh, um, sorry, he's been able to take advantage of. You know, and I think the biggest thing with him is is that mindset of 
hey, I was undrafted. I am constantly proving myself. And a lot of those guys have that mindset, the ones that are really good and producing. Um, but it's paid off for them. Are you guys changing anything about your, how you're handling Jeff's injury this week, or is it kind of the same holding pattern? It's yeah, same mold, you know. So he's, he's not practicing right now. So we'll kind of see where it's at towards the end of the week. When it comes to uh, Caleb, you know, still not seeing him on the field, are, are you satisfied with what he is, uh, you know, the improvements, I guess, that he's making? Probably is, is he taking the coaching, I guess? Yeah, I think he's been engaged. He's had a good attitude about it. Um, again, I think with, with all these guys, the, the message every single day is find ways to improve. Whatever it is, pick one thing, and let's work on that and focus on that to improve. And hopefully that pays off as we, we – continue forward and keep moving and then see where things are at. But he is. He's had a good mindset. He's working out here. Is there one thing maybe that he has been improved on, even if he's not playing? Yeah, I think you see some of the technique and coverage showing up, you know, between our reps, the the dirty show reps, right, working with the offense, some of that. Like, you're seeing some of those things carry over from Indy to those periods, and hopefully that can continue the consistency of it. They, like you just said, they have things to improve on, but they were really proud of the way that they performed. It was a performance that they could hang their hats on. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, it's been throughout the year the they've shown the ability to fight and battle regardless of what it is, the long drive to start the game and to come away with holding them to three points, going back out there after the touchdown drive late in the game with just under two minutes and finding a stop there to make them punt the ball. Um, like that's kind of been our MO and I think they've, the players have built that. They've built that culture between Jeff, KB, all of our leaders, Danico, David Long, like all those guys, they have that mentality. Um, but it has to be better from an execution standpoint. We can't rely on that to solely be what we hang our hat on. We got to be able to go out there and execute and line up too many MAs, too many little things there. And at times they didn't cost us, right? But at times they did, you know, so it's, a, it's, there's such a small margin for error in this league, whoever you're playing, right? So just making sure we're locked in and honed in on the details of each call and everybody making sure they're executing their role. Are there moments that you see an offense that run, run a play that you know isn't, isn't a strength of theirs or anything that isn't a significant gain or anything where you say, that's just them trying to keep us on, honest. We know that's not what they do. They don't like to do that. They're not good at doing that. Let's not give that much weight. Yeah, you see that. I mean, you you see teams based on, and a lot of that's based on how the game's going. You know, our our opinion of things. Um, like last week when they when they ran the ball, right? Like they weren't having much much success, and they'd mix it in. But at some point, they said, "Screw it, let's get away from this, and let's give it to Patrick and let him go do his thing," right? So, I mean, that that comes into play. I think it's very situational specific, and partly their culture, their team kind of how they're built schematically and personnel-wise.